Star Wars The Force Awakens is by far the best way I could end car side reviews. It's just a damn good movie. The arguable charm of my show is I go see a movie, come into my car and review it right away so I get that fresh review out. I don't have to sit and let it stew for a while and nitpick the shit out of it. Now I know this isn't the first review out the door. There's like a billion YouTube videos out here reviewing Star Wars The Force Awakens, so I listen to mine. No, I, I, I don't have an answer. Why, why are you listening to this? You already know you're going to see it. Everybody's been praising it. There's no reason not to. Uh, the cast is great. The newcomers, um, Oscar Isaac, who arguably is not fleshed out enough. He's not very fleshed out at all. I, for some reason, I liked him a lot. I don't know why. Maybe it's just his can-do spirit. Then there's John Boyega and Daisy Ridley, the highlights of the film. Adam Driver plays the bad guy, Kylo Ren, Darth Vader 2.0. He's solid. I'm not, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but once more... This is out, but the movie's been out for like two or two or three days when this comes out, but it feels like it's been out for a month already. The amount of spoilers hitting the internet, the amount of reviews already out there. And I want to point out that I am going to do a car side podcast, uh, something I haven't done in a long time, but that's going to be a longer drawn out 30, 40 minute thing where I, I discuss the spoilers of the movie. Uh, the impressions that left, certain scenes that didn't work, and, and scenes that really worked well. Outside of our new cast, we do have old favorites returning. We saw Han Solo and Chewbacca in the trailer. We saw Carrie Fisher in the trailer. Han Solo was in it a lot more than I thought. I was expecting a 10 to 15 minute thing. Harrison Ford gets his check, bounces, he's done. But he was in it for, God, 45 minutes an hour of the damn movie, I'd say. And I don't know if that's a good thing. I really liked the new cast. I thought Han Solo was great 30 years ago. He's, you know, Harrison Ford's in his, I don't know, what, 70s, 80s? The guy's fucking old. And he still did a great job. The story is basically a rehash of A New Hope. It's just A New Hope again. I, I get that, you know, J.J. Abrams respects the shit out of Star Wars. He, you know, he wants to feed off that nostalgia. But, like, there's so many stories you could tell in the Star Wars universe that, that have been told in the comics and the, the TV series and all the fan shit out there that Disney has now thrown in the garbage. Here we are again, and uh, I'm just thinking, like, wow, the, the effects are amazing, the cinematography's fantastic, the acting is on fleek, uh, as, as the kids say, but why, why is the story so kind of... Eh, we've been here, we've done that before. So this one really nails the tone. It's gritty, it's it's dark when it needs to be, but it's also light lighthearted, it's humorous. Uh, BB-8 is phenomenal, you know? Our R2-D2 to me was always the unsung hero of the Star Wars franchise, and here we have, you know, BB-8 who's doing it again. You know, he's, he's gonna kick a lot of ass, I think, and I, I hope he keeps rolling on to the next films. Pun intended. I, sh I should back up. There was one scene uh, where the special effects were very much in line with the prequels. There were there was um, some very clearly CGI'd uh, characters that uh, that have like a ten minute sequence in the film, and that part was that was kind of punishing. It was a fun scene, but my God, why? Why did they decide to go back to the prequel style with those creatures? I have no idea. Acting wise, I said it was great, and and uh, the story was a little. Uh, but there was one dialogue session where I, w I was actually, I turned to the person next to me and I'm like, okay, well, this exposition's really fun to listen to. It was just really poorly written shit. This is something you see in kind of a B, a C movie where the person's like, wow, it's nice to see you again. Uh, remember the last time we saw each other and this happened and this happened and then you went off and did this and uh, meanwhile, when you were doing that, I was doing this and this guy was over here and do you remember all that stuff? Oh, you do? Well, of course you do, because, you know, why Why the fuck wouldn't you remember that? But the audience doesn't know this conversation, so we have to fill them in. And it's just really poorly handled. Uh, it, it came off really cheesy and, and not even in the fun Star Wars way. I'm nitpicking things because it was really damn good. It was, it was so fun to be back there in the theater, uh, watching Star Wars on the big screen and having fun with it and not rolling my eyes at stupid-ass Jake Lloyd in his pod racer and Jar Jar Binks acting like a fucking idiot. I get that kids like it, but there has to be, there's gotta be balance in the force. The fights, the lightsaber duels were great. Um, they were sloppier. They were far less choreographed, which I loved. If A New Hope is an eight and a half and uh, Empire Strikes Back is a 10, a Return of the Jedi is a nine and a half or nine, something like that. I would say this is um, this is a this is a nine. This is a nine for me.
just need a little bit more character development, which we're going to get in the next film. Uh, a little less cock teasing. I would have liked a beginning, middle, and end. I'm not sure this really had that. Because there's going to be a million more Star Wars, which isn't a bad thing. It's just that that needs to be said. It's going to happen now. Disney owns them. They're going to they're going to milk this bitch. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And uh, thanks for joining me in the car this season. If this is your first episode, I encourage you to go back and watch me act like an idiot in front of the camera and talk about movies. Maybe I'll come back with some more Cars Side next year. I haven't decided yet, but take care.